Hello everyone and welcome to this new video in which we are going to attack a machine and become root as usual using very different enumeration techniques and exploitation techniques. You're going to learn a lot from this video. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to choose CTF all the day on rootme.org awesome platform that I've used since I've started learning ethical hacking and it's free. I mean, this is where I learned pretty much all the basics. So I'm going to choose a room here, CTF07. Oops, actually someone has taken it. So let's take CTF09, choose our virtual machine. In this case, that would be ACID server. Let's save. And start the game can spin up your own machine on your own room and hack along the way. It's a good exercise to practice. Um, I'm all about hands-on learning. I don't really like too much of uh, the theory. I mean, it's essential, but if you don't practice, then it doesn't serve you anything. So we're going to wait for a moment in order for the machine to boot up. And after a moment, we have the host name of the machine. So let me just select this. So this is a black box approach. We don't know anything about this machine yet. But through this series of enumeration techniques, we're going to find out how we can navigate through the vulnerabilities in this machine in order to, to become root and own the entire server. In order to do that, the first thing I need and which you should learn about is nmap. It allows you to perform um, port scanning. So here I'm going to target the first 200 ports in order to make it quick. I'm going to target only open, to show only open ports. And I'm going to um, use the verbose mode and paste in my host name. Give it a try. Oops, I have some errors, so I'm just going to redirect them to DevNull. That way we have a clean output. So it's telling me that probably the machine is down and you could use dash capital PN in order to force the port scanning. But I guess it's just because the machine is not up and running yet. Um, it's, it's taking some time for the services to be spun up. So we are going to give it some time and uh, retry. Oops, I made a mistake here. It's actually CTF9 and I need the top port. So, so we are going to wait a little bit and hopefully we can see some ports. So we see that we have two uh, 22, which is probably SSH. So if we type SSH root at ctf09.rootme.org and we get a prompt, which means that there is a SSH service running, which accepts password, we could brute force it. But because this would give us direct access to the machine, I don't think that's the way to go. We need to do a little more bit of uh, enumeration. So now instead of doing the top 200 ports, I'm going to target all the TCP ports. And so the shortcut is to dash to use dash p dash. Okay, let's give it a try now. See what we get. All right, so we find the same port as before 22 for SSH. Let's hope that there is something else that we could use. Oops, we have a new port, which is outside the standard range of the TCP ports used by Nmap. That's why we've used this option here. So uh, this port, I don't know what it is, but let's uh, let's wait for a moment and or, or actually let's retry. But in this case, I'm going to use dash SV to enumerate the service itself. That way I don't have to do it manually. So we have three minutes 
and a half remaining. Meanwhile, I'm just going to probe this uh, port and see what it has. So I'm going to use an netcat. So netcat dash v ctf09 dot root me dot org and let's paste in our port here. So we see that the uh, probe has succeeded. And so let's just send something gibberish just to see what we get. And so it seems that we get back a HTML page saying error 401 not implemented. Okay, so it seems that this is like a web server and uh, we can probably wait for the results of Nmap. But meanwhile, I'm just going to fetch this page and see what we get. So that would be CTF09 and the port number would be this one. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take this and use it in my web browser. And sure enough, we get a web page back. Welcome to the world of acid. Fairy Tales uses secret keys to open the magical doors. Mm, the first thing I always see try here because we don't see any pages, any links, anything at all. Just going to see what we have in the source code. So control U or right click and uh, view page source. Nothing really interesting here. We, we have something in the title called slash challenge and we have a reference to the background image here in the style and that's pretty much it. I get, oh, what do we have here? So it's zero X means we start with, it's a hexadecimal string. I wonder what this is. So let's copy this. And uh, let's uh, use Python to decode it. So Python. Okay, we get the prompt and now we just uh, paste this string here. Uh, from experience, um, I see that pretty much all the bytes fall into the ASCII range. So 64, 32, 39, etc. So I'm going to decode this from hex to ASCII. And right away we get what seems to be a base64 encoded string. And with time and experience, you get to spot this kind of encodings. So I could use Python to decode it, but I need to import some libraries. So what I'm going to do is just echo this and pipe it to base64 encode. And we get wow.jpg. Okay. I wonder where, where this image is hosted. Meanwhile, Nmap has finished and we indeed have only two ports, 22 and our obscure TCP port, which was nothing but a web server, Apache HTTPD with the exact version and it's working, running on a Ubuntu machine. Okay. So let's continue with our enumeration for the uh, web service. So we have two leads here. We have slash challenges and we have this image which we don't know what it is hosted. Let's start with the slash challenges or challenge just to see if we get anything. And indeed, we have a login page. Welcome to hell. Well, this is not reassuring, but we're going to enter the hell and we're not afraid of it. So likewise, I'm just going to show the source code of the page. And we have the title, secure login and uh, yeah bunch of CSS, JavaScript, welcome to hell. And this is the form that we are going to post to with the action that points to includes process dash login, underscore login.php post and the parameters are email and password. It's trying to, yeah, this is a, on click, there's an invocation for 
the function from hash or form hash, which takes in the form and the form password. Hmm. Okay, and we have some JavaScript file. So if we click on it, 404 not found, no problem. What about this forms.js? Ah, this is where we find the form hash with the form and the password. And it's trying to append a input field hidden and then performs what seems to be a SHA-512 on the password and then it sends it to the server. Okay. I don't see anything that seems vulnerable here. I'm not sure if this is the way to go. So let's close this. Let's go back to, uh, let's try uh, some SQL injection. Or one equals one. If you're not familiar with what is SQL injection, then I highly recommend that you check out uh, my web hacking lab which you can download on thehackerish.com and learn the basics of web hacking. Going to use the same email for the password and it says error logging in. All right, let's see where we can find the uh, image, the wow.jpg. Nope, it's not here, it's maybe here. Nope, not here either. I wonder if there is a folder for images. I already have this background, which if I'm not mistaken is under images. Yep. So we have the background. So maybe we can fetch the page, the uh, image from here. And uh, yes, it seems that this is our image, which simply says success. I'm not sure if this is really the way to go. I mean, because we had it in a comment below the page, I think that's the lead. So let's follow that lead and see if it's a rabbit hole or something that's worth uh, pursuing. So what I'm going to do is uh, CD into my folder, asset server, and let's download this file. So let's just verify its uh, format. So it's a GIF actually. So we can move the extension from wow.jpg to GIF. And uh, well, because this is an image, well, we can use EXIF tool and try to see if we find something interesting here. Mm-hmm, nothing. What about strings? Wow dot, if I could type, wow dot jpeg. Uh, yeah, it's gif actually. Ooh, we have something interesting here. This is not usual in a image. This is again, just with experience. And from what I see, it's also a string of hex characters piped or concatenated to a column. So once again, I'm going to use Python to define a variable that contains our potential string. And then from there, I'm going to say, hey, why would hold X? Well, it's going to hold this, an array of strings or an array of characters using the separator. So that way we have an array. And from there, I'm just going to join everything using this loop. I mean, you can also use the replace function, but this is also another way to do it for i in y. So this is our string and we can say, hey, decode this using hex. All right. Hmm. 
So this seems like a hash, again, from experience. I'm really sorry, but um, let's see if we can find it online. So we're going to simply copy paste it and click on the first result. And sure enough, it says here that it's basically tran it's uh, the original string is this one, six, three, four, two, five. I don't know what it is. It might be a file under challenge. Nope. We're about under challenge. Nope. Um, I really don't know. Anyways, we could also try under the image and maybe append an extension. Nothing here. So it seems that we've hit a roadblock. I'm going to think about it and in the next video we're going to see how we could find an entry point based on what we've enumerated so far. It's always a good idea to take some rest and get back once you have a new idea. So subscribe to this channel and hit the ring bell to get notified when the next video goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.